In this video, we're going to look at um, how to determine a molecular mass and a formula mass. Um, so molecular mass is applied to molecular compounds, and formula mass or formula weight applies to ionic compounds. Turns out that they're calculated in exactly the same way. We just make the distinction because of the the, the difference between how a, mo a mo the differences between a molecular compound. This is a compound that has covalent bonds where all the atoms are linked together versus an ionic compound, which just has um, different ratios of ions in them. But really, the, the thing to focus on is that there's really no functional difference between the two, but there is a conceptual difference between the two. Okay, so let's start with the molecular weight. So this is the sum of the atomic weights of uh, the atoms in a molecule. Okay, so for example, we have something like carbon dioxide. Um, down the road, when we start to draw Lewis structures, you're going to see that carbon dioxide looks like this. It's a carbon with double bonds to uh, two oxygen atoms. So when you have carbon dioxide, um, the gas and air, what you basically have is these, these CO2 molecules that are floating around, and it's basically carbon linked to two oxygens through these bonds. So the individual unit of CO2 is a molecule, and that, molecu the, that molecular unit is bound together as a packet. So in essence, for every CO2, you have one carbon and two oxygens. So if we want to come up with the molecular weight of a CO2 molecule, we have to add up all the different components. So we go to the periodic table and we look up how much the carbon weighs. And that's going to be 12.01 grams. So we take the 12.01 grams and we've got one of those. So we multiply that by one. And that's going to give us the mass of the carbon component in carbon dioxide. And then we have to account for the two oxygens. So there are 16 grams and again, I go to the periodic table, I look at how much an oxygen atom weighs. I see that for every mole of oxygen atoms, there's uh, 16 grams. So I multiply that 16 grams times 2, because there are two of them. And then I add this up, and that's how I get my 44.01 grams per mole. So in the last video, I kind of introduced that 44.01 grams without really explaining it. This is how I got there. Uh, the way that I got there was by taking the carbon and the oxygen, I look at the periodic table for those atoms, figure out what their, um, their uh, atomic weights are in grams per mole. And then I know that, um, so one thing I should clarify is when I write these 12.01 grams and the 16.01 grams, it's important to remember that that 12.01 grams is for one mole of carbon atoms and that 16 grams is for one mole of oxygen atoms. So when we add this all together, that's 44.01 grams for every mole of carbon dioxide. Now let's look at the formula unit or the formula weight. So this is the sum of the atomic, uh, this is the sum of the atomic weights of the atoms in a formula unit. Now, um, so what is a formula unit? That's really the, the important uh, question. And when we think of NaCl, remember NaCl is really a lattice of sodium and chloride ions. So NaCl So NaCl really equals this, right? There's no there's no bonds between these things. Um, the only bond that's really there is the interaction between a positive and negative charge, which we call the electrostatic interaction. So it's not like carbon dioxide where the carbon and the oxygens are physically connected to each other with a covalent bond. In this case, you have these ions and they're packed into a lattice and that lattice is held together by the electrostatic interaction. So how do we sort of differentiate this? Well, we know from the when we wrote ionic compounds, when we were dealing with ionic compounds in chapter two, we can write their um, their chemical formula by writing the the lowest ratio of atoms in the crystal. So, in terms of the 
in terms of NaCl as an example, NaCl is equal to a formula unit. And it, it represents the, the, the lowest ratio of atoms that are in there. So in essence, you can kind of think of this as a molecular um, weight because in essence, when you have sodium chloride, for every one sodium, there will always be one chlorine. It's just that they're not bound together in a bound together with covalent bonds, they're bound together with electrostatic bonds. So it's the basic ratio of ions in the salt. The good thing is that there is no difference in terms of calculating a formula weight versus a molecular weight. We're going to do the same exact thing. For the formula weight, we have 1 Na and we have 1 Cl. So when we add this up, we go to the periodic table and we find the mass of an Na, and that's 22.99 grams per mole. We multiply that by one since there's one in there. And we then take the mass of a chloride, a, cl a chlorine atom, that's 35.45 grams per mole. We multiply that by one because there's one in there. And so we get 58.44 grams per mole. And again, that just simply means that when you have one mole of NaCl, or you have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd formula units, um, and if remember, a formula unit is not a molecule, it's just when you have uh, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of these NaCl um, ion pairs, which forms the, the formula unit, that's going to weigh 58.44 grams. So that's why this is important. So now you know how to take the atomic masses, which are available on the periodic table, and convert those into a mass for any compound that's out there. Um, so now we have all the different um, disparate steps. We're going to put this all together now and start working through some um, mole unit conversion problems, going back to what we did in the last video using the mole as a unit conversion.